then started now sudanti yeah. yes ma'am yes ma'am i have okay. started ma'am i shall we start the session sir with your permission sir please. yes yes please please start yes, please sir. go a very pleasant good morning to everyone educate and raise the masses and thus alone a nation is possible quoted by swami vivekananda on education on behalf of college of management srm institute of science and technology katangolathur campus i dr suganti assistant professor feels elated in welcoming our chief guest distinguished invitees dignitaries faculty members and participants we are grateful to our chief guest for accepting the invitation and sparing his valuable time to grace the inaugural ceremony of AICTE training and learning academy atal sponsored five day faculty development program on technology disruptions in management from today the 23rd august to 27th august 2021 light is good from whatever lamp it shines let's start the program with lighting of virtual lamp ya kunde tu tu shar har dhavala ya shubhra vastra vruta ya veena var dand mandit kara ya shvet padma sana ya brahma chut shankar prabhuti bhi devai Education is all about creating an environment of academic freedom where bright mind meets discover and learn one would experience top of the world living and learning experience at SRM here comes a short av about SRM IST Vijay sir Vijay sir can you play
we have among us today our esteemed chief guest mr ganesh mani s director and board member hyundai motor india limited dr v m ponnaya d college of management srm ist dr kavita shanmugam program coordinator and participants from various institutions leadership and learning are indispensable to each other it's time to invite one such person who is a continuous learner dr v m ponnaya d college of management srm ist he has been associated with srm ist since 2004 he has 25 years of industrial experience before he associated with srm ist he has introduced various innovative programs at faculty of management vis-a-vis mba in digital marketing banking and financial services artificial okay. intelligence and data science business analytics hospital management waste management social entrepreneurship and online mba he has been conferred with many awards vis-a-vis the best citizen of india award 2021 by international publishing house new delhi indira gandhi priyadarshini award glory of india award bharat ratna dr apj abdul kalam excellence award and bharat gaurav award from india international friendship society he is also honored with lifetime achievement award from world management congress and best teacher award from srm ist i invite our beloved dean to deliver the welcome address and keynote address good morning all participants is it audible and visible yes sir okay right i take this opportunity to welcome each of the participants who have registered for this one week online fdp program supported and approved by ACT uh, training and learning academy oh, all my senior colleagues who are working in various b schools and other professional courses who have registered under this important topic technology disruptions in management is very very vital and all of you as teachers have experienced for the last one and a half years what is that technology disrupted how we have learned how we have learned for our career for our job for our society for our family upkeep always necessity is the important thing when the technology was expected to drive many of the thing in the corporate especially in the education sector it was indicated that it will take more years to accept all these technology driven however this pandemic made us to immediately evolve and accept and rise up to the new normal i just want to take this opportunity to convey the good wishes and compliments from our honorable vice chancellor of srm institute of science and technology professor muttamil chelva and our registrar srm institute of science and technology professor ponnu sami both of them were busy with other important commitments i take this opportunity to welcome today's chief guest ganesh mani and various session in charges all of them have been agreed and accepted our request by both of the coordinators of this program <coughs> dr kavita shanmugam and dr sugandhi and ably supported my all my colleagues in the college of management and all the session in charges have <coughs> accepted our request to deliver in their area of domain for enabling learning that is the very purpose of this atel sponsor program i'll take few things from my understanding of technology colleagues 
when we are all talking about management which is practiced in many domains if we take the marketing how we receive our materials we learned two days back that world's retailer largest retailer walmart is overtaken by amazon in the retailing what is the necessity of marketing in this backdrop this is one important message to each one of us if we take the hr in the hr how the colleges are admitting our students how they apply online how the e counseling is being done how the processing is being done for those final year students placement training absorbing everybody knows what is hr technology enables in the hr if you take the operations i am sure mr ganesh mani is going to talk from the manufacturing sector point of view all our operations whether we are commuting whether we are reaching out how artificial intelligence and help to remove repetitive work the human being can be utilized for create sir please unmute yourself sir unmute okay thank you fine is it okay so yes sir all those operations removing the repetitive work and allot to machines which will do repetitive work without any monitoring all those things we know in the operation side if you take system side systems management the technology is driving fast developing every area development is taking place all the business models are changing every area of business is facilitated for their growth and sustainability because of technology only search entities who are able to know yes i need to know how to utilize my technology how to make use of the technology efficiency and growth and roi all will set in otherwise doing normally normal sort of things going for a incremental way of growth all those things will not cater to the today's computers today's world of market expectations are very huge if you take financial technology all of us know very well what finance and technology are doing everyone knows what is paytm what is google pay what is that we facilitate cashless transaction in india for the last 60 years what is the percentage of cashless and within 3 years what is the percentage of cashless transaction all those things are defined by the technology absorbed by all the stakeholders before i wrap up i want to tell one more thing all of you must understand what is the common thread among pyjus o v o swiggy paytm all are in different different field o v o own your own homes ola swiggy paytm pyjus what is the common thread i learned all of them are unicorns the valuation is us dollars 1 billion india in 2015 had five unicorns a startup venture which achieved 1 billion valuation only five numbers in 2015 all unicorns were in china and us today we have 52 unicorns 
in the 2021 calendar year till yesterday 23 unicorns out of the 52 so what is technology doing what is technology doing in the management everyone everyone knows very well as a faculty member as a practicing corporate managers if we are not taking to the next level probably we will become redundant i am sure each one of you have joined with lot of expectations and we will fulfill at the end of this five day fdp program that's a great learning for each one of you in the very very important team technology disruptions in the management i take this opportunity to thank acte all the regulatory authority and the management of all the participants your college principals deans your managers who all permitted you to join this program and not the least all my colleagues from the college of management 73 faculty members 17 non teaching staff members and management students and phd scholars all have contributed to the growth of the college of management they are all very eagerly waiting for such programs to come we welcome each one of you in our future endeavors whatever programs whether it is aict supported or our own, our own program please engage us with your participation wish you all the very best to all the participants whatever time you have spent will be remembered for long time thank you thank you sir for your wonderful speech motivation and support i now invite dr kavita shanmugam program coordinator to brief about the fdp Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Ah. Good morning, everybody. Uh, respected dean and all the dignitaries who have joined with us today, and my dear colleagues, and also beloved participants. Uh, first of all, thank you all for having us in this uh, FDP and for registering yourself. So, thank you uh, first of all for that. Uh, so today, I just want to take a few minutes uh, to tell you how this FDP was designed and how it is going to be executed. Uh, first of all, I want to uh, tell about the participants about disruptive technology. What does it mean exactly? So, disruptive technology is any innovation that significantly changes or it drastically changes the way. Uh, consumers or industries or uh, businesses operate so something that drastically changes something that was already done and uh, we have lot of examples i have only given a few here uh, the blockchain technology and uh, we have uh, complete disruptive technologies in the automobile sector we have mr ganesh mani uh, sir with us today uh, he'll be uh, uh, delivering his speech on this line and uh, we have electric cars that have uh, you know come up now and online education in our own field we have online education that has disrupted 3d technologies video streaming uh, ride sharing apps the list goes on so uh, this is the theme of this fdb that uh, we are going to experience for the next 5 uh, days and uh, technology transformation uh, happens across functional uh, domains Uh, whatever the functional manager has been doing, uh, you know that has been altered due to the uh, digital technologies. Uh, we have, for example, Kavita, ma'am, sorry, sorry to disturb you, ma'am. Ma'am, your presentation screen is not visible, ma'am. Only the downloads is visible to us. I have actually shared.
Is it visible now? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. So disruptive technology is what I was telling you about. And uh, then technology transformation across functional domains. Uh, first, when we take up uh, finance, in finance, you know, there's uh, a kind of a very relationship between technology and finance. Uh, participants, please uh, mute yourself. Uh, they're starting from banking technologies and the technology in financial markets, in investment and wealth management uh, domain, and uh, you can take uh, digital or uh, cryptocurrencies and the uh, different modern sources of fundraising like P2P lending, crowdsourcing, robot advisory services. So the list goes on. And uh, in uh, HR, similarly, the uh, functions of the HR manager has totally changed now. Uh, HR managers, uh, they have started using technology for you know, talent acquisition or say compensation management, performance management, data storage. So how people can be better managed with the technology is what, you know, HR managers are, uh, you know, doing now. And uh, coming to uh, marketing technologies, we have digital marketing tools like automation platforms, adv advertising platforms, social media tool, tools, sales enablement uh, tools, and so on. So, uh, and also in operations and manufacturing, today we are talking about, uh, we are experiencing industry 4.0. And the fourth industrial revolution is the ongoing automation of the traditional, it's, uh, it has changed the traditional manufacturing and industrial practices by using smart modern technologies. Um, so, uh, there are a lot of technologies that drive uh, these uh, innovations. We have artificial intelligence, machine learning, 3D technologies, IoT, blockchain, and so on. So, uh, so, so this is what you'll be experiencing for the uh, total five days package. And also the techno startups are, as our Dean Sir was telling you, the techno startups are experiencing exponential growth in the past few years, especially in the past decade. And many of these techno startups are turning out to be successful unicorns. Uh, so coming to this FDP, we have uh, totally uh, five, uh, 15 sessions that have been planned uh, for uh, this uh, five days package and all from various functional domains. And uh, the speakers have been uh, very carefully chosen, handpicked by us, the top industry leaders and eminent academicians from top B schools. So majority from the industry and also we have a few academicians who will be joining us uh, for uh, giving you their own very, very valuable inputs. And uh, we have uh, the maximum of 200 participants, uh, participants from across 20 states in India and they are from 68 districts and are from 108 institutions across India. And we have 22 percentage of our colleagues and scholars from SRM group. So uh, dear participants, now let us start the technology journey. And I very strongly believe that by the end of this FDP, you all will have excellent take home valuable inputs and definitely you will uh, carry home uh, wonderful uh, memories uh, that you will cherish, okay, after coming here to us for this FDP at College of Management, SRMISD. And I want to thank each and every one of you for making this to happen. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. I'm profusely elated to take an opportunity to introduce the chief guest of the day, Mr. Ganeshwani S, director and board member, Hyundai Motor India Limited. <laughs> Mr. Mani is a mechanical engineer by qualification and also holds an MBA degree with double gold medal in operations management from Management Development Institute, Gurkhan. He has a rich and wide experience of 30 plus years across multiple functions in the automobile industry. He worked as vice president in Maruti Suzuki India Limited 
and had spent over 25 years across various functions. As director and board member at Hyundai Motor India Limited HMIL, he guides HMIL's strategy and operations and leads the organization's initiatives towards a successful and meaningful future. Also, he oversees the entire passenger car and powertrain manufacturing from new model projects, logistics for domestic and export markets. He leads a vibrant team of 14,000 plus members, motivating them to achieve operational excellence and deliver superior quality, ensuring HMIL's top ranking among the 33 plants of Hyundai Motor Company across the world. A firm believer of using technology for sustained excellence, he spearheads the application of big data analytics, virtual reality, and artificial intelligence in manufacturing at Hyundai Motor India. Championed by My Place, My Pride, innovative voluntary program at HMIL received global recognition, change and innovation leader award from Hyundai Motor Group's chairman, led the core team to HMIL to win the prestigious Indian Manufacturer of the Year Award by Frost and Sullivan for three years and the Smart Factory Award in the maiden attempt. Under his leadership, various sustainability practices across Industry 4.0 initiatives put in place in Hyundai Motor India which led to the IEI Industry Excellence Award 2019. Institute of Engineers, India, felicitated Mr. Well, Ganesh Mani with Eminent Engineer Award in 2019 awesome. for his illustrious career and contribution to automotive industry. Chitkara University, Punjab, presented Mr. Mani with Doctor of Literature, DLIT, Honoris Casa in 2020 for his exemplary contribution to business, education, and humanity. He was also conferred with Intrapreneur Award by Decision Sciences Institute, DSI Houston. His inquisitive and inquisitive quest and passion in the field of automotive field and rich experience has resulted in seven copyrights, patents, and publication of papers in reputed journals like Global Business Review. I now hand over the floor, Mr. Ganesh Mani, Director, Manufacturing, Hyundai, for his session on technology disruptions in auto industry and manufacturing. Then, now, what next? Over to you, sir. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, can you, can you? Welcome. Oh, Welcome, thanks. sir, uh, Ganesh Pani, sir. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, sir. Thank so you, we are sir. eager to listen thank to you. Thank, you. thank you, doctor. Thank you, doctor. Thank you, Dr. Kavita. There are so many doctors, so I'm already in a jittery now. So a whole lot of doctors, Dr. Mr. Punaya, Dr. Kavita, of course, uh, Dr. Sugandhi. It was a very long, you know, introduction about myself. I think I should tell my team to reduce this speech of introduction slice anyway. Uh, thanks for patient listening about all those laurels. Thank you so much. You have been very, um, uh, you know, generous in that. Okay. Good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I was told uh, I need to speak for around 45 to 50 minutes, which is very long time ago. I have done that. So I hope I do my justice uh, to that. Um, you know, when Dr. Kavita asked me uh, to talk, I think over LinkedIn, that's how she got connected. Uh, you know, the moment I said it's a faculty development program, it came in multiple respect. I could not refuse to that primarily because of multiple reasons. Number one is that, uh, you know, I'm all, you know, lifetime reader, learner. So I always need to respect the people who are, you know, spearheading the entire initiative. The community, which one community, which makes the, the world progress, more specifically, India progress is primarily this fraternity I always respect. You know, that's what the, uh, that's the minimum most thing I think one should do for making it possible. Thanks for inviting me here. Uh, you know, today's uh, topic itself looks to be very good. This uh, program of faculty 
you know, development uh, uh, program. I thought it, it should keep happening already, but uh, having said that, the time of timing of this is becoming very important. Um, you know, the, uh, the time uh, from the perspective of, uh, uh, especially the post corona, uh, when things are getting so much of disruptive, uh, I was just recalling my days like uh, before corona and post corona and before corona, that's all BC and after corona, AC, this is what we call it uh, ourselves nowadays. Uh, I hope the same thing has taken a lot of lead in, uh, you know, uh, even in the traditional world of education as well. At least we have gone through a, so much of metamorphosis of changes um, in the industry, the way how we see the customer start seeing us, the way how we approach uh, the industry itself, especially the manufacturing, where there is a whole lot of conglomeration of, you know, people uh, and the machine comes into picture, which we still cannot avoid. Even teaching is perhaps is, uh, you know, nice. And I also see that, you know, I'm also witnessing how students are trying to, you know, cheat the professors by making a, some kind of a mock video of actively listening, whereas they actually keep going to outside world. And so as all the other professors as well on, you know, it's a very different experience altogether. I was incidentally thinking about the age old concept, you know, no more gold medals are relevant right now because it's a very, old studies one has to keep uh, you know upgrading yourselves i was listening to a term called bull whip effect on inefficiency of supply chain management so i was just thinking how relevant today first and foremost is bull whip itself is irrelevant you will be under you know you'll be arrested under peta act you know a lot of whole lot of activists are here they will come and say that no animals to be you know uh, disturbed so you'll be out of the entire system so bull whip itself is gone but it actually, whenever there is a change of demand happens, you know, what is the inefficiency in the supply chain or value chain? I've written a paper on that on those days. So first of all, bull whip itself is gone. Second thing is about, uh, I was also thinking like, with the so much of digitalization comes into picture, will it really make so much of a difference? Maybe 10 years, 15 years uh, back itself, intranet started connections happening. So the immediate information goes back so that the people can always adjust. Uh, you know the uh, the way how do they, how do they operate? But later on, now that you know blockchain is coming, I could see a couple of uh, you know people are going to talk about it. I don't think whether this web effect would even be ever there or not. So ultimately, all those things learned us become irrelevant now. So one has to really you know keep upgrading, and that's what is very important. Uh, the people who are actually imparting the knowledge also should move into that direction. The other thing is about how technology has been disrupting is, uh, I'm going to talk a lot about that before even starting that. What has happened in uh, Olympia, Olympics in, uh, you know, recently held in Tokyo. Two interesting which came into my mind. One is that uh, I was re really hoping for archery gold to India because Deepika Kumari was his all time favorite for so many years when she has won recently in India before she went there. But at the end of the day, it was won by Korea, Korean team for both male and female together. But primarily, you know, that, that is where the difference between the way artificial intelligence and disruptive technologies have come into picture. They, have, they had a traditional program run on using artificial intelligence, iris movement of component, opponents as well as them to just to make sure that how a coordination can happen, the way how to set, uh, how, how one has to aim what will the angle of fingers need to be? What is the angle of the body portion need to be? What needs to be strengthened? So they have done it a whole lot of exercises. It's actually a combination of both technology and individual capability. That's the whole reason they want. And who will, for, who will forget about Nike's superhuman max fly effect of the shoes, which created an uproar in the entire industry. So they said, if you wear this, you have to concentrate only on shoe rather than anything else. So it automatically augments the way how sprinters run. So technology cannot be awarded in any of the places wherever you are going. And so as I was just thinking, the coaches of them also need to have that knowledge in a much more better way. So in, uh, then I realized that, you know, whenever I visit down to shop store, I find that how irrelevant I have become. That the technology is what I learned so far is no more relevant. We talk about data scientists, which are happening around the world. And, uh, Recently, you know, just to get an upgrade, I also started doing some other, you know, leadership courses. 
or in something called as a metal so it is an artificial intelligence noting down the iris of the people who are writing so it becomes completely it's an online you cannot definitely cheat even do, doing any anything else also happening out there so a lot of things which is happening around me also is 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 moving around and as as rightly said by dr kavita it's not only everywhere even hyper local marketing i vividly remember in 2018 uh, when i visited san francisco google uh, you know team a small tiny chap he just came that exactly where exactly the money need to be spent on marketing by doing a simple calculation on you know his his uh, desire movements in internet facebooks and social medias the interest of a car which car he wants which color he wants which model he wants everything is almost about to take a decision between two companies and that's where you need to pitch in just give him this offer call him he will definitely you know allow you to buy so instead of going for a traditional btl atl all these things are marketing techniques things are becoming a very big change changes now so in that note disruption is always be a part of our traditional journey but what is more relevant today is is the one which i'm going to talk about it now why why this becomes paramount importance is the one we are going to see that so i'm going to take you through a presentation i hope you can see my presentation uh, can, can i just confirm please yes sir yes sir we can see yeah, that's what it is so i just try to jot on for around 30 odd minutes i will try to finish it up and then i'll be able to take out any questions of of any one of you as well so i want to make it slightly interactive in the sense that uh, not you know speaking maybe perhaps in your know, chat box i want lot of messages to flow around what what you are talking about during the program also there are a couple of questions will be thrown i think i could see a whole lot of doctors in the participant list also maybe you know you instead of you asking people questions now probably you become you know uh, for a couple of hours reverse roles role reverses are identifying how difficult it is for the student to really be attentive to the classes it could be a testing time for each one of you as well so there will be a couple of questions i'm going to throw i think i want some of you in case if you can can just write it down so that we can also you know get understanding from that so i just named it as the then now and what next so obviously as as rightly said uh, then now what next comes in multiple contexts we always say that the before corona era we used to call it as a normal then the first wave we call it as the new normal after the second wave we call it as a next normal so we keep changing the definitions of it but this one is a much more in a larger context on then now and what next so probably we can have a span of uh, 3500 bc to maybe around 2100 of uh, ad so that's what maybe the span i i i let me try to see from that angle so we just go back to that so ultimately innovation and disruptive technology makes life better faster simpler and smarter and the moment if 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 that is what is uh, is the truth picture is and if as a human being are not updated ourselves will become dumper you know people will start calling it as an outdated people the, the, especially the new generation who understands these technologies in a much more better way so that also comes with the caveat of you know and the kind of tenacity to keep learning also that's what i always think it so let's travel together to the homo sapiens era to witness the impact of human innovation so let's let's go down to you know behind the scene of time travel so i would like to go back in the period of you know 3500 so but having said that human in you know innovations uh, in the sense uh, you know historically if you see uh, 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 you know most of the in inventions are inspired by the na natural world which everybody understand that so like the way what we are seeing is the human fork has come out from the traditional way of how how do they use it during the paddy field the aeroplane has anyway come from the bird that's a that's a simplest thing to really understand from there and so on so forth is is a key now similarly um, you know like uh, so one ingenious uh, invention alone you know took a whole lot of uh, the just yeah took so long until uh, 3500 bc so can anyone guess which invention created marvelous you know revolution amongst us which is still making an important thing for all of us maybe this could be the first question to all of us 
so i think oh that's wonderful there is some uh, valli is coming up with something very important on that anybody else who would like to give a thought on that okay that's a great so light okay bala said about light that's also very important but light is a natural thing right so fire okay fire is also very important that's beautiful paper okay okay wheels. so yes yeah, right yeah uh, wheels sir right yeah, everything looks to be of uh, you know what what your whatever your writing is very important but the most important thing which i would like to you know bring it down here is uh, is is as importantly as you rightly said about uh, uh the invention of first wheel because i am an automotive guy so the valley has probably thought what is the best fit answer to that so probably just come to that so but uh, as right he said uh, you know the invention of <laughs> can you can you go on participants participants please mute yourself i know that there are a lot of other activities also keep going on at home but that's what it is you know multidisciplinary activities but <laughs> okay the invention of the first wheel around 3500 bc because there was no example of the wheel in nature that's what is more important right, is all about and you know that the kind of changes it created so the first wheel was created somewhere in 3500 bc but people were using it majorly for pottery you know not really used for transportation because maybe perhaps the connection between two areas maybe no wedding separately moving out receptions going out with friends may not have been the case i don't know exactly in 3500 bc people were so content themselves you know moving around the houses whatever it was more of a self sustained life of uh, activities were must have been going on but uh, if you see that in the the actual spoked wheel was invented around 2000 bc which means close to you know of course a great revolution to transportation but the important point i like to say here is at least uh, you know it took whole lot of year to convert the process but having said that after that you know another 3500 years is primarily horse drawn carriages have been in use at least for 3500 years as a model of you know as a mode of transportation as latest as you know maybe the people who are in my generation generation x and y would have probably witnessed that still it is on the road if you go down to some of the stay you know the village areas but gradually still you know horse has always been the case there is a famous uh, study that even the meter gauge or the broad gauge has come based on you know the back of the horse which which was uh, disturbing the person who is riding it that's the whole reason why that the you know the, the the distance between two uh, rails also have come across it's very interesting uh, case is all about so that's what has been the case of it that's what the uh, advantage of it the most important thing is that as uh, rightly said by William Cooper first necessity invented the stools convenience next suggested the elbow chairs and luxury come you know accomplished the sofa last so at the end of the day it always keeps going in this direction and wherever what we are doing we always tend to go towards uh, you know activities of right? and that is how it moved in a uh, multiple ways so these kind of disruptive technologies are are definitely like missile so you you would have seen that some of the uh, you know the traditional business models completely get collapsed the moment a new disruptive technology is come it the only important thing is that now it may hit any time and changes the entire landscape so we just happen to see what is happening now is something different but in 1900 if you time travel to us you know this is a very important new york state and this is a, this is a very important street called fifth avenue which is still a very traditionally very important thing so what you are probably uh, must be seeing here is maybe perhaps you know new york state filled up with the horses for transportation in 1900 and that's the year you all you all know that automotive industry is not too old one it's only our 100 110 years old so when first uh, you know the car uh, was made uh, maybe perhaps in just 13 years and this is what the scenario happened in uh, fifth avenue in 1913 uh the interesting fact is that was there any horse uh, you know uh, was available i think if if someone can find out where exactly is the horse one this is what it is there was only one horse driven movement and rest of all the people have moved on to the car itself so the automotive industry it, it was taking 13 years to quickly you know adapt to the technology disruption so if i say that 13 years to take a technology disruption is looking 
still a laughable material, primarily because of the way how uh, nowadays things are happening. Uh, there is no excuses to stop this stuff technology, definitely, but the how is working on is, is in the history of innovation cycles. While the first wave, second wave, third wave, fourth wave brought about the one which we already know, and fifth wave is the one which is you know creating a changes and how this this has been working also in terms of digital network software and new media. But having done it in these thirty years itself, the most important thing of sixth wave has already started, and that's what is mostly talked about you, and that's what is going to be the conference is also all about is uh, you know artificial intelligence internet of things robots uh, drones you know a whole lot of clean technologies so it's really coming up in a big way and we, have, we will talk about that also in a little later so maybe perhaps you know the longevity continue to shorten we are in the era of rapid advancement and rapid reach so if i were to give an example of how, how you know how does it work maybe perhaps the history of hard drive technologies advancement is the best thing so it took 50 years for a for scientists to bring, bring from 5 MB hard disk to you know, 500 GB hard disk in a smaller size. And within eight months, one TB, now it has come in seven TBs also. 2007 is much more older area. Nowadays, now started pen drives are coming up in, a, you know, in multiple TBs also. So I think uh, you have a lifetime saving for, you know, if, you, if you are there around 10, 5, 15 years back. Now the way technologies and this uh, data is getting generated, even this also will become an uh, important thing. But this is pretty important. You know, you all would know, obviously everybody would know about the S-curve, be it as the human for, you know, learning or be it as the technology. Reaching 50 million use years, how, how much is the reduction is happening? If you see onto the left side, it's a very favorite one. When it took electricity for so many years, credit cards, televisions, ATMs, computers, Mobiles also took a lot of time. Internet took a lot of, you know, 12, you know, less than seven years to do that. Facebook, three years. WeChat, one year. Pokemon Go is a very lovely game in 19 days. WhatsApps. And of course, you know, the, the traditional video, uh, Instagrams so are taking very, very quick and rapid on that. So primarily the S-curve is continuously getting shrunk and maybe perhaps yesterday and today technology also keep changing. 127 years of automotive technology has been moving also in the same direction. So when we started with steam engine, we want to ga gasoline powered and diesel powered, still it is continuing. And then the technology started, you know, getting into a whole lot of, in, you know, inflate, technological advancement started getting into the car, which we are doing it. And then we moved into electric cars and the fuel cell car, we'll talk about it. And also a car which drives in itself. This is going to be the future and the jobs have already started happening on the next direction also. So at the end of the day, you will also understand that, you know, entire modern auto industry is experiencing a fifth wave and sixth wave of innovation. Traditionally, I always say that automotive industry is something like a Bollywood or a Hollywood industry, wherein every Friday a movie gets released. By Sunday, box office collections is, decides whether it is going to be a success or failure a movie. So that's what movie pundits keep uh, talking about it. So automotive industry is also something like this. It's a highly glamorous industry. And also the people I always say, my, say my people are, you are all my heroes and heroines. And uh, in that way, every year in India alone, and an average 200, you know, close to 100 plus new models come. At least in every week, two models gets launched on an average. And it all determined by the, none other than the customers themselves. We tend to understand and start doing it. So how well we are doing this is a very important thing. And traditionally for the la last two, 2020, uh, we could introduce, we were, we were able to launch six models, all six models were a grand success. That also shows how usage of technology, usage of people connecting to the people has really been working a lot. So that's come with certain important thing, like chance always favors the bold. And, uh, you know, our own reference to show that this is a momentous impact on rapid technology. So if you take about the auto industry, then and now, the, those are all the days where some of you still would have witnessed this and uh, carburetor, water removal, hectic job, or vehicle gets stuck up, pushing, somebody comes and, you know, uh, you know, doing this mechanic guys. But from there, we are, we are the first one to introduce a tall boy design in, you know, 1998. 
that was a multi point fuel injection there are a lot of customers who still proudly say that they have never opened a bonnet of um, you know the santro car and any of the car which is being made by us because the technology has in itself taken over and each and every year we bring up new technologies and similarly if the car car technology advances exponentially that's how the manufacturing also does it this is the photograph which is taken you know just couple of days back on my shop floor for this conference to show and you can just see that how technological things have gone and um, robots are the one which really you know understands whatever we need to say it is able to uh, constantly deliver on whatever it is and our own people i'm proud to say that they themselves can design and you know start making and also programming these kind of robots as well so it used to take around 4 minutes to make a car for us in 1998 now for every 31 seconds we are able to roll out that's what the you know disruptive technology has resulted in so what's the secret behind between these two other things the incidentally the photograph what you are seeing on the back side is the ionic 5 is a new model which is introduced in us as well as all the other european market as well definitely we will also bring when the market is ready this is an electric car which can run for 600 kilometers at one go with 20 minutes of charging you know when you stop for a tea at a in between distance from say a two to two distance from delhi to kanpur i think you'll be able to travel within 21 minutes it gets uh, you know charged the good point is that if you buy this car we always say that you don't have to buy a car if you don't you don't have to buy a house because the charging of electricity can actually charge back your house needs of uh, fridge washing machine dishwasher and everything else also it can actually you can draw power from this car and start using it also so that's what the power of it the material which is being used is a highly sustainable one like for example sugarcane extracts are being used for seat fabrics similarly and lot of uh, flowers uh, you know extracts are used for making it as an interior color of the car and whole lot of you know advantages it's a third stage of autonomous car so okay coming back to the topic of 4 minutes to 31 seconds uh, is that it's an unlocking of digital seven sense of manufacturing and we i can keep on extending my talk on that but my i would like to you know talk in a with couple of examples how does it really happen so smart manufacturing ecosystem it comes from uh, rapid vehicle technology advancement as you could see that you know be it as uh, petrol diesel or any other fuel fossil fuel then move on to electricity then again a next technology of hydrogen technology which comes into picture so that's one thing and similarly rapid uh, increasing manufacturing technology advancement as well so when you see this overall you know though the looks very complicating this is what the traditionally you know prof i mean the teaching fraternity understand these term, these these kind of slides it's very difficult for students like us to really understand uh, just to make it in uh, such a way that you know it whether it is a learning development whether it is a maintenance or a machine how end to end integrated manufacturing solutions enables fast scaling and advancement is is the key that's what we have been working on so one such example is that how two robots you know communicating each other the one which you are seeing is it it waits for the other one to come and then there is a handshake happens on the on the air and then it keeps moving across from here to there so earlier we used to find it to be very difficult you know have a handshake between the two in robots so these kind of things are day in and out 24 by 6 um you know work for more than 300 days in a year constantly they work together and without having to do anything on that this i always say that traditional way of indian dancing wherein everything becomes very synchronized synchronized kind of activities which keeps happening so similarly if you see uh, how we are interacting is that there are seven or eight uh, you know touch points like the way customer touch points there for a, for a, from a customer analysis so all these six data checkpoints we are able to develop you know the uh, dashboards ourselves and our people our engineers young engineers can continuously monitor the health of the robot it's something like human hover robot how this uh, keeps happening so it's a very you know it manufacturing or industry is no more a boring job it's it's an exciting job where you find a lot of implementation initiatives keeps happening so 21st century manufacturing is a world of a difference in itself and with increasing computing speed and things are changing in a very very big manner so 
which is coming into the picture. So you have 2,430 connected machines available, 1,040 intelligence sensors, and 105 plus self-learning machines, we call it as it, 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 it corrects in itself to change it over what exactly happened. So we call it as an, you know, IIoT enabled industry, internet of things enabled, smart shops are becoming. So smart shops are people. So close to 12 billion data point per year gets connected and these all can get monitored from a centralized way of working it out to make how things can work in a much more better way. It's very exciting. So, and this cannot be managed without the people instead of only we call it as an engineers, we call it as a data scientist and technological experts. And they are the one who you know, he keep reminding me about how you know, outdated I am. I need to really keep improving myself, my skills as well. So it's not only restricted to you know, manufacturing, it, uh, it works as a digitalization of car sales and service. I think some of you would be knowing that, especially uh, Corona has helped the implementation in a much more rapid pace. <laughs> You know, when you see from a, a perspective of, uh, Vikram sir, please mute yourself. Mr. Vikram sir, please mute yourself. Thank you. Thanks, Vikram. Um, so when you see online digital applications, you know, when you want to buy a car, you don't have to really go around looking around the places. Majority of pieces, people find that internet is one of the important places of how does it happen? The marketing happens with the hyper-local marketing concepts. And we have also started doing something called a click to buy. You know, click of a button, you can always buy. If Amazon can deliver everything to you, why don't the car also can get delivered? But still it's, there is a human element comes into picture. So how we can actually combine all those things together is the important thing. We'll be working together on, on various aspects. So in a future point of view, you'll see that uh, even, even the sales and marketing also keeps working on various activities. So that's what the way how we are advancing in the value chain. But the, this is very important, uh, you know, understanding what I understand is that how the whole lot of, you know, right, right from the way uh, simulation and testing, how the batteries and fuel exhaust systems need to work, how the engine system work, how automotive software has to work, supply chain, sales and marketing, manufacturing, all these things are governed by the one which is right now, which is completely changing the way how we are converting. So from a level of, uh, you know, artificial intelligence, IOTs, robotics, 3D printing, immersive technologies like uh, virtual reality, blockchain, which is still being explored here, I believe next 10, 15 years is going to really, next five years, I believe it's going to change. And as I slightly said about energy innovations and also autonomous vehicles. So in a single industry with a quantum computing keeps moving up, I think we, feel, we believe that it's going to disruptively change also in a big way. One such example is that, you know, on seeing this, I really felt very happy. The computing power started growing exponentially in the early 21st century. And the technology will advance, uh, you know, more rapidly than ever. That's what a traditional thing, but actually it has happened. In 18 years, it has gone up to the level of five-fold, you know, uh, if you see the y-axis of that. And there comes the next, you know, surprise to me that the next 10 years, I've seen 2018 has converted into a mini school of it. Now it has gone up to the level of 200 plus and it is still growing. And that's where the entire disruptions are happening. That's how you know, we are going to go towards all those engines together. So from the vantage point of, you know, people living and working in the future of 2028, it would appear that, you know, there was virtually no improvement, whatever has happened today. So if we have a feeling like we have improved a lot, maybe another five years, 10 years down the line, our sons and daughters will definitely ask you, you guys are, I don't know, how did you guys live in this kind of a world and how it's possible. That's what we have been asking our parents. After 30 years, now they will ask in another five, 10 years. So how are you going to prepare ourselves and which we don't know, but it's definitely, we know that it's changing as fast and definitely we know that we are getting outdated. That's what important thing. You know, based on the survey, obviously the soft skills continue to become on creativity, persuasions, collaboration, adaptivity, and emotional intelligence. Most important thing is on 10 hard skills is, I'm interestingly, I, I could find that majority of the, you know, topics of uh, this conference is, you know, it's getting covered on all these areas. 
and uh, how things are going to take a turn in an advantage is is this going to be you know i'm happy that this is all being discussed at the uh, at the you know faculty level and program like uh, in reputed institute like srm and i'm i'm pretty happy that these things are working under here so the future is definitely wow if the present itself was wow for us five years before and five years now but the future is going to be a double wow so i'll just give an example of how you know i always taken metaphor of uh, automotive guy because that's how i've been thinking everything in, in in terms of a car so future of mobility is obviously a connected a clean and a freedom in mobility that's what you know we have been working on that's why we our entire you know thought itself is converted from uh, just a traditional car manufacturer we wanted to give a complete you know uh, mobility solution providers to the world it's it's a mobility solution providing in terms of the way we connect the car how we interact car to car connectivity cleaning cleaning of a clean is very important now that uh, there is a big myth around the world that cars are only polluting which is which is definitely not having said that we wanted to eradicate nobody even puts fingers on us on a winter morning i don't want any of the newspapers talking about because of car the entire smog comes we know that the smog is coming from you know neighboring states but having said that um, we don't want to be a part of that at all for which we are creating a car i'll talk about it and also freedom and mobility is that how long we will try to continue to drive i mean during driving is one of the most important time you know multi billion possible opportunities of you know marketing is available in the person is you know freed from driving of a car so i think uh, that's all the three areas where things have been working across to begin with is a connected car you know the car can talk to you you can talk to the car you can ask it to do anything you know it, it the car is is going to really interact you in a much more uh, better way and uh, just those connecting feature pc these are all the four models which we introduced we started with 33 features in in venue which was a big success still is going great guns in 2019 in 20 within 6 months we were able to augment it to 45 more connected feature facilities and uh, in 2020 creta is a runaway success 54 and which recently launched alcazar of 60 plus it has got so many you know important uh, you know features when people can always use it for their own will and we are going to continue to work on much more bigger way it will be very interesting to know that fuel cells are not a traditionally a new one but using in which industry is important so the fuel cell in apollo 11 was the one which which was utilized for generating power in moon and this launched in moon realized the dream of mankind and that's how the same thing the time has come to you know start working on you know for other purposes also car industry is one of the important thing the one which you are seeing right now is called as h2o so primarily wow factor also comes into picture the one that you are seeing is b does the automotive b does the ship or the heavy vehicle or a train hydrogen is going could be one of the very important fuel the first and foremost is that it's absolutely clean unlike electric uh, you will need to spend you know energy to produce this itself is abundantly available and the most important thing is that the car which is uh, which is done i always uh, you know tell my people the moment you buy a car maybe in delhi in the traffic light you can stop the car you get down go to your exhaust and go to exhaust system and put your glass and you will get a pure h2o the the output of this car is going to be only h2o and it's such a clean uh, you know car on these facilities we are going to start we have already started making it these cars are will definitely be coming you know in a big way uh, there are companies like reliance are starting talking about this fuel availability to us so once it is all made available to the public i think we'll be the first one to launch these cars also traditionally in india very in the world there are very few players who can actually make this activity also the next one is as they talk about self driving car we have got multiple things to do can the car take over you know itself to do that there are five different stages the way how we are working right now and then there is some amount of drive assistant system we call this an adas which is advanced drive assist systems multiple features are now coming up in a car and then partial automation in the sense uh, we can keep your hands off but not minds off then comes also you know kind of uh, the second one you know your eyes off the eyes have to be off the fourth one is about the hands off 
and you know eyes off but the minds need to be off that's called as fourth wave maybe the fifth level automation autonomation you know that's called as autonomous would be perhaps is going to be all the three things off you can actually turn back your car and start interacting with the people the car will drive themselves so even in india it is possible it will come so maybe by 2030 and we have the technology and that will come across here also but having said that you know the cars are not meant to be um, driven only on the road so it has to it has to have something called other facility also you know that the sky is no limit so the above you know the building height the lot of space is available so the urban air mobility is a concept which is uh, which is introduced in 2020 in consumer electronics show in las vegas it's called a ces it's a very uh, very very famous one and this uh, concept of you know electric flying taxi concept is introduced and not only concept we started making it also soon it's going to be in reality where in between one place to other place from srm to hyundai probably i can take a yak taxi and quickly come there address the audience and go out also in a shorter span of time as well and that is possible uh, you know it's got a highest amount of advantage these these are all special rotors to give very less noise pollution and generally because in a helicopter runs uh, you know whole lot of noise and lot of other difficulties keeps happening and also we call this the cars around there it's called as a pbvs which is a self autonomous driven car you just sit in the car it can actually take you to office and you can start working on that you can have your client meetings in the car itself because it's an autonomous car you can have a running cafeteria and that can always you can eat and you know have traditional meetings and keep moving ahead. so ultimately during the travel you will you will be allowed to do many things else also i mean how long we talk about only a car driven in only the place of earth the car which you are working in is called as elevate you know it's called as a, uh, you know now this car can drive you in the moon so we are also making this tiger transforming intelligent ground excursion robot this is going to be run on multiple mode and it is got the way how nasa talked about recent uh, rover and all now it will be very easy for us to start making and that this is what the journey we have so starting from land air moon and that's what the only place is right now maybe other you know mars once it is ready probably we'll be able, we'll be able to start you know sending cars also there for a mobility transformation as well all these things requires whole lot of uh, you know reskilling be it as a faculty be it as a student be it as the professionals like us as per world economic forum 50 percentage of reskilling is required 50 percent is a enormous amount of percentage i think i believe it is highly underrated i believe it is uh, 100 percent is it should have been the answer so there are top 10 skills by 2025 one need to do that i'm sure each one of you must be aware that's a whole reason this conference is happening so disruption can any way be formed we is a technology skill or a business environment i think once we are bold enough and think differently things are going to really come up in a very big way so as always i end up with a with a story on that so this is in 333 bc alexander the great marches armies into you know the, the modern day turkey uh and he finds a big rope with tight and intricate knot so he has he, he has asked the people to open it up quickly and uh, they were all trying to find out how is it possible how can we manage there were a whole lot of you know debates were going on but at the end of the day he simply you know attempted to unbind it they are unable to find out with any of those solutions how to do that but at the one fine day he thought what I, what exactly i am doing so with a sly smile cross his face his eyes mischievously twinkle he whipped out you know the sword and he cut the knot into half and produced the required end to unite so the point was how to untie it as it to be retied on that the question would have been different so now the case is of disruption is about leaving aside what was going on and take it to the next level that's what the disruption is all about it is not about you know taking things along with that going uh, things are either this way or you know Uh, the other way is, is the the way how the you know the technology disruptions have been moving across so uh, to end my presentations i would like to read this through sir haruki morakami's uh, important uh, quote on you know once the storm is over you won't remember how you made it through how you managed to survive but you won't even be sure whether the storm is really over or not that's what you know you can always see from the context of uh, corona you know covid 19 itself but one thing is definitely sure sure certain when you come out of the storm 
you will definitely you won't be the same person who walked in i think most of you people who walked out of the hospital would have definitely thought about it the way how we see that how we are seeing a lesser number of cases and that's what all this storm is all about i think maybe perhaps that is what we need to you know start working on what needs to be done in a big way so keeping that as the important uh, you know parameter and uh, you know uh, it it keeps moving on this direction is the uh, critical thing what we are going to talk about and at the end of the day you know uh, one 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 has to be really thinking on what we are going to do how quickly we can learn what yesterday's technology is not going to be any advantage and uh, i i sincerely hope that this conference of five days which is meticulously planned by dr kavita and her team uh, i'm sure you will find a lot of values into that i hope my pr presentation also has given a kind of a you know kind of an you know indication and it could act as some you know added advantage to all of you in that note thank you so much for uh, such a lovely opportunity you have been a wonderful audience obviously i can't see any one of your reactions to you so obviously everything you know i always assume that you have been rapt listeners and you would get also something back from this team over to you dr kavita and thank you so much and if you have any questions i'm 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 always available thank you before uh, before we open the floor to the audience uh, for the participants to uh, raise their queries i want to uh, thank uh, mr ganesh mani uh, sir uh, that was a wow session okay and uh, you actually uh, took us through this uh, automotive uh, journey and uh, you have said that disruptive technologies are similar to missiles and also about the different innovation waves and how quickly we need to uh, upskill ourselves and also about sustainability that's uh, one interesting area how sugarcane juice and the flowers are used uh, for uh, maintaining the sustainability and about industry 4.0 techniques about the computing speed in 2028 and uh, most important you have showed us uh, you know the, how robots are used in your manufacturing process i mean in hyundai factory about self driving cars about uh, electric flying taxis and about a car on the moon and how we could uh, fly from srm to hyundai and uh, interact with all of you there and uh, ended up with uh, the story of alexander the great and about haruki uh, murakami so uh, that was indeed a very very superb session sir and uh, thank you once again because you know i know on monday morning you are a very very busy person and i told you one thing sir uh, please take this as a social responsibility to share your knowledge with our uh, faculty members and scholars Yeah. and uh, that uh, i bow myself to you for accepting uh, to be with us today and sharing your uh, you know a rich experience with us uh, for all our faculty members thank you so much for that and i also want to specially thank mr rajshekar manager hyundai i don't know whether he has joined us uh, he was so wonderful right. to yes sir <laughs> he uh, rajshekar can you just show up uh, show up for uh, if you are there online i is there come here yeah can you see i don't know i can't uh, see myself yes uh, slightly uh, yeah tashikar uh, so thank you so much for uh, this wonderful coordination with uh, ganesh mani sir uh, and now uh, we can open the floor for uh, queries from the participants yeah there is a question from uh, again it must be dr vegadesh yeah sir it was nice you know uh, hearing you out and uh, also this presentation was awesome i should say thank you a little louder sir a little louder yeah. a little louder please yeah okay you know you have gone completely silent now i think it's gone mute i don't know sometimes these technologies are uh, you know uh it misleads what happens probably yeah i think he was going already all right i only got it spoiled no 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 thank you dear sir please go ahead yeah you can always come back to sir probably your connection yeah. got disrupted otherwise you can type in something thank you dear sir can you type your question there's some there's some problem with your audio we can see you
So there's a question from uh, Mrs. Panarainen. Mm -hmm. This technological excellence, how can I hear me, sir? Yeah, yeah. Is it as cost may be very high for the company? Yeah, we will take her question. I'll 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 ask ah. uh, sir, Dr. Vengresh. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah, okay. May I come in? Yeah, please. Okay, uh, so uh, thank you, sir. Uh, it was nice uh, hearing to you and uh, a very nice presentation. Thank you. But uh, I have a very small question. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, I'm a, a professor teaching uh, supply chain management and uh, related subjects, and I teach MBA students here at Symbiosis. Yes. So uh, I have one, uh, you know, very, uh, uh, you know, a common question which comes across that. Uh, uh, especially the non-engineers who are, you know, into MBA, especially who want to take supply chain management. Now the question comes is, is it necessary that, you know, only supply chain manager, you know, uh, the engineers can be into supply chain and then what are the opportunities for those who are, uh, you know, not very into core engineering, but uh, want to uh, have a lot of aspirations thinking about supply chain management as a career or as a future. I mean, uh, I mean, this goes without saying. I think that is what the experience also you would have seen, uh, uh, Dr. Sir. Primarily because uh, be engineer, I'm also an engineer, so I, I take a blame on myself. We have a very traditional logical thinking. Whereas we find, that we have experience in, in our company also. We, we take a person from, uh, you know, for example, uh, uh, Christ College, and then who have done MBA, they started doing traditionally very well in that or uh, Sriram Institute of Colleges. I think we always find that the other than engineers, they do very well, you know, in terms of supply chain also the moment they understand the nuances of it. But I, I don't think, uh, you know, that is what the trend is all about. Any of the companies you take, Amazon and all, they don't give any, you know, weightage to what we have learned at all. So they do an unlearning and they, they start from zero. And that's what we have also been doing. So my answer to your question is that, I think probably in case if still that is existing or not, I'm not sure. But I think it's all gone out of uh, the days that only engineers need to come in. Right? It's just by traditionally, you know, after the child is born, we make them an engineer. That's what the <laughs> parents mindset. That's why a lot of people are coming from this. Uh, no, this, this arises mostly like what happens, you know, when company uh, recruiters come in, uh, they, you know, give out a kind of a spreadsheet saying that, no, other than engineers don't talk to me, that kind of attitude. Oh. So what happens is, you know, the students, uh, you know, those are especially from the non-engineers and uh, they get demotivated in the first place itself. And then they think, uh, then why the hell did I take even supply chain or, you know, how am I supposed to go about I think and, and any, I, I'm also a non-engineer, but I teach uh, supply chain. Then what, right. if I tell them that if I can do, why not do that kind of thing? Absolutely. absolutely. I think what you're saying is absolutely right. I, I don't know. It is not in the good part of there are. It all depends on the industry again. So there are certain traditional industries wherein, you know, the basic prerequisite comes into picture. But otherwise, I would uh, normally believe that this should not be a qualifier for a person. <laughs> okay, sir. Exactly. They are uh, other side of the same uh, question. Uh, can I just take one minute? That's all. Yeah, yeah, please go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So uh, if I need to, you know, guide them saying that, you know, okay, what can non uh, engineers really do in supply chain? So what are those two or three, you know, core areas which you think you can do? I'm a very simple. Uh, sure. You know, I always believe, like, for example, I'm not too good in finance. So I really expose myself into finance because if you want to really become a board of director, you need to really have a more of, you know, knowledge about it first and foremost. I cannot just go and say that I can't read it. So if the, that application goes to me, that application as well goes to them. Nowadays, it is definitely not a single, uh, you know, technology oriented uh, knowledge need to be there. People need to expose themselves on talking about it. So, Supposing the first thing is about the mindset change of a recruiter, that will anyway automatically happen the moment they start doing it. So, be it as whatever the organization I worked with, I found at least 50% of the people have come from there is MBA. We find that people come from a non engineering background. We made it a practice, we made it as you know, consciously we do that. But that is one change will happen. The second aspect is the people who get exposed also, they cannot talk about only what is being taught in the class. I think they need to get exposed to what does it or what does the normally, you know, industry guys talk about it. 
the moment that confident level come and come to the recruiter okay this guy or a girl can go and manage i think that there is no you know end to it. that's what i think maybe uh, i don't know whether i have answered your question or not which comes a very logical conclusion to me that's what i could see that's fine sir no problem thank, thank you. you so much okay thank now coming back to the other question uh, dr kavita you asked about uh, sustainability so there are only two possible ways okay either you are you know you are you are there in the in the scheme of things or you are out of the scheme of things there are only two options given to you whether you are in the game or out of the game when the question of in the game or out of the game comes you have to really start investing on various technologies and um, it's no more a day of you know jugad engineering or jugad technology introduction in india people call it as a you know frugal engineering it's a very traditional uh, one but at the same time we got a fantastic mindset of how we are thinking differently that's what our indians are all about so to answer the question of them will the sustainability comes into picture on uh, you know uh, on new technologies i'll just give an example we were just recently talking internally For the last 10 years we have spent at least four you know a billion dollar in hydrogen technology with virtually zero outcome so far throughout the world close to 7000 cars are being sold but we know this is what is going to be the future by 2050 so for a technology of 2050 if you don't right now do it maybe at that time it will not be affordable to you so the moment it becomes an affordable then it becomes a very simplest way of possibility of technology be it as an electric, electrical for example it used to be a car, per unit of manufacturing it used to cost say 200 dollars now it is gradually dropping down to 100 the day it become 50 or uh, 50 or uh, 20 then the whole disruption will happen for which you need to really invest on that uh, an organization need to really work on that even the small scale industry i could see a question about msme see the mindset change is very important all you have to do is you know start investing on certain important thing best example i would say uh, while converting our shop floor into you know data centric we didn't have to really you know completely change the entire thing we trained our people plug and play mechanism combine together and then start working on how do we really do that i think our you leave it to our engineers they will do it as a, as a head of organization one has to keep that flow in mind that i need to go along with the scheme of things. that's how things will work i hope you answered it i have question and how soon the electric cars are going to replace petrol diesel car in india it's a very great question doctor uh, there is no straight answer to this but i can tell you one thing as i said the affordability is going to be the key as far as this technology is concerned we have uh, concerning related to the uh, you know the uh, infrastructure of uh, uh, charging stations and all those things need to be placed but i don't see any change till uh, 2020 20, 2030 or 2035 the change of petrol or diesel cars the way how stuff as of now stand today but maybe perhaps uh, tomorrow suddenly something else comes and uh, it has to get for a change so the most important thing is as of now this is what it is but we'll continue to introduce india also will have lot of you know cars and the two wheelers will have electricity both the technologies will coincide for many more years to come and then gradually there will be a change over and over that's what my personal view yeah. thank you uh, we have another Yes. I'm, we have another I'm question sorry. from Dr. Edwin. Uh, Dr. Edwin has asked: Will sodium substitute or complement lithium batteries? Uh, whether it will be complemented? Yeah, correct. I mean, uh, that that's from right. Dr. Right now, right now, this is the technologies available. Whole lot of people are working working with multiple technologies right now, but uh, you know things are rapidly changing. So it's a it's a ever evolving world now. So we hope. uh some day you know when it becomes an affordability something may get cracked and the disruptive technology can start with these kind of materials itself so we can only hope iit metras is working extensively on that also we also have certain amount of ties or tie-ups with them many other activities as well okay uh, so good morning uh, good morning ganesh sir this is dr ritu from hyderabad i did my phd from the maruti itself i have one question when we don't have a sufficient inputs or raw material with us in the form of electric vehicles why the government has make it mandatory up to 2025 to have an electric vehicles don't you think that it is a pressure on the common people 
And second in thing, what my analysis as an analysis that whatever the petrol price is increasing or diesel, there is a, a tactics behind the government whether if we increase a petrol or diesel price, automatically the people will influence towards electric people. Uh, uh, what? Okay, I understood, Doctor Vito. There are you question. I've got a couple of uh, you know uh, concepts. I need to first of all clarify to that. See, government uh, from their side. Uh, there is nothing called us by 2025. You need to have, you must to have change into electric cars. So I think that clarification has already come. So it's not possible so easy because all the other things come into picture. As I said, it's going to coexist. Both the, the technology available will be open. When you go to a restaurant, you have multiple, you know, cuisines available. It is for the customer or the as a as a person who's visiting, he'll be able to take it. Electrical technology will come with a certain amount of premium price. And also, you know, certain difficulties and someone can always understand, you know, how, how do we really, uh, uh, you, if you want to take that risk of element and the people will try to go. But otherwise, the traditional petrol and diesel cars would continue. And uh, petrol and diesel cars, you know, the price of them is governed majorly by the international market and all the other compulsions of the government. You also know about it. Uh, we have a lot of, you know, that tax alone gives a lot of, you know, money for infrastructure and all the other stuff. So it's going to be a real, uh, it's a very sensitive one, uh, uh, even for government as well. So I'm sure, uh, I think they are into a right direction of guiding the industry towards, you know, going to next technology. Maybe perhaps, you know, after five, 10 years, may, we may go for hydrogen technology as well in case it becomes affordable. So from that extent, I believe, uh, you know, government has always been supporting us. And they're also giving an, you know, kind of indication where we need to work on that. So we will take as an advice on which direction we need to go and otherwise customers will decide which technology you would like to buy and go. I hope uh, I answered your question. Yeah. But what I think said, see, basically, before making any policy or launching to the people, because it creates a fuss in the market, what I have seen, even if you see that the sale of all the vehicles, passengers' cars, or all the vehicles of two wheelers also, it is a fuss in the market. And they are giving more relaxation to the electrical vehicles as compared to petrol and diesel, right? And if you see, like Maruti, Maruti has not launched any vehicle 2021. They are planning to launch 2000 and they are going for their battery operating, decrease their battery operating cost also. And if Tata is also doing like that only. They are uh, establishing their own plans for battery. Same I am expecting from your company. When the things are not on the floor, why they are doing this policy? No, doing so as we are facing a COVID, we are facing COVID, we are in a pandemic, we are in the first curve, we are in unstability. In spite of that, they are doing like that to an automobile sector, which is giving a 4% of GDP to the Indian government. Right. Yeah, I think uh, probably when you have a session with government officials, probably you can tell that it will be very useful to us also, definitely. But we will like to take this as an, you know, kind of uh, impetus from them to how we can actually start working yes. towards them. And as well, you know, working on new technologies, continue to give focus on diesel and petrol vehicles itself. So that's what our focus have, have been. And we, as an automotive manufacturer, I'm supposed to give a product which is, uh, you know, in terms of it helps the sustainability to the go environment as well as you know the needs of the customers like uh, the one like all of you so we go we we have to start working on that i'm sure government would definitely listen to you also and make their own policy on that but otherwise otherwise there is no mandatory that uh, you know by this year you have to come out of that not like that i want to emphasize on that part they have not done that yeah okay yes uh, okay. dr shailesh uh... Do you have a question to ask? Uh, he has raised his Yeah, yeah. Yeah, good morning. Yes, sir. Yeah, good morning. So, I have a question. Uh, the kind of changes that we envisage in the automotive industry, what would be the winners and losers in the supply chain for automotive industries? What kind of players would be the winners? What kind of players would be the losers? Uh, probably my presentation itself was an answer to this question, uh, Dr. Sairesh, is that the person, as I said, you know, and the persons who are flexible enough to understand and adapt to the changing environment will be the winners traditionally. That's for the human also, not only the, uh, you know, industry. 
and the people who so my, my my question uh, is in terms of the oems okay uh, i mean so see, uh, my question is in terms of the oems and the other players correct so not the individual that like, like so whether it is oems or individuals also it's the same but oems also i would say for perhaps you know if you have enough technology in the for, forefront and if you are if you can think about you 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 are bold enough to start spending money on research and development at any point of time you know minimum of 3 to 5 percentage every year constantly you have a big infrastructure which can always think about doing that and also an organization which also have people who are willing to experiment and change themselves and those are all the oems will definitely survive and rest of the other people will definitely will not survive I, i that's what i i perhaps think about it when i think about my company and that's what we are working on that we proudly say that for a uh, for india till 2050 we have a technology after 2050 also we do have but right now 2050 is a big horizon on which those things are there if the other companies feel they are not into it either they have to correct it otherwise they may have to they will get automatically yeah thank you one last question please i got another so, meeting yeah sir, one last question sir venkatesh uh, sir uh, i think Yohan we can yeah. give opportunity for right. others also it's fine it's uh, fine. Th- uh, uh, there's a question uh, here regarding uh, is it true that ev causes pollution tesla was fined by singapore authority I, so there's a question from mr shridhar uh, i don't know whether it is relevant for you here sir uh, i don't think uh, i'll be able yes, to this question yes sir yes sir yes okay and uh, sir venkatesh sir you have only asked very small only... question yeah very small question. yeah <laughs> okay So Vinay sir, I just wanted to ask that uh, you know there are a lot of this uh, recent trend about uh, online courses like uh, Coursera, EDX, and many of them, the MOOCs. So these certifications, how do you treat this? Uh, uh, you know, when uh, when you look for recruitment, you know um, what what you are saying is true because traditionally we are just into post Corona era, right? So the the Corona batches are going to come out now. Okay, we we call it as Corona batches, right? Okay. Many of the B schools are almost in an online mode. So I think you guys are the best guys to really talk about the students who are from a you know one to one interactive people and the one who are actually into online. If you are take on both are same, I think industry also will definitely take it back there. Yeah. Currently, definitely there is no changes as such that you know only before Corona era only should come. Lot of traditional jokes are going around in this part of the world. you are from a corona batch or something as if students have not studied at all <laughs> it's a very tough one it is the technology is enough available in fact make it a highly accountable most of the meetings are highly effective because for example 9:30 the session starts on a normal traditional basis people would have joined it by 9:45 or so but 9:30 sharp it starts that means the efficiency of these online platforms are really increasing as long as the industries and the institutes maintain that sanctity of you know the education and imparting knowledge into this picture industry will definitely see we don't really bother how the traditional mediums are doing what really matters is the student output as long as it is ensured by the institute and of course the students as well i think uh, i think this is going to be the main thing and there are a whole lot of courses i believe it gives a whole lot of value yes, there's a plethora of them and uh, thing is you know they, there's a lot of investment also because it's not free uh, you know some might be free but there's a ah. lot of uh, money involved in that yeah, absolutely absolutely it's, it's it's actually a great business model itself for making money so i think this is going to be the in thing definitely yeah. no, that's why i was worried about what about the acceptance for uh, recruitment <laughs> would come as long as a boy or a girl is able to deliver to us so it right. doesn't matter facebook doesn't recruit a person on basis of degree he, okay. he doesn't even insist on education qualification he just tests on that you know an activity and then this you also will evolve around like this thank you sir thank you sir thank you so much dr kavita i think uh, I, can you just uh, yeah, yes sir uh, yes sir sir so, uh, please uh, stop sharing sir so that we can have a uh, Uh, we can ask participants to uh, i would have done that earlier also when their uh, no, no no not an issue sir okay uh, so participants please uh, uh, open your video so that we can have a screenshot uh, before we end the session
This is a sign of mark of attendance, is it? I don't know. Is that <laughs> <laughs> Just as a record, sir. Yeah, thank you. And for memory. Bilateral high school. Ma'am, also, ma ma also mail it to us also. Yes. Yes. Sure, we'll do that. The Kumnadi line, the patchy ground glass of us is on the line of second left point up. Last line of second point up. Suganti, are we done? A few more minutes. Sir, are the Kumnadi line longer? So online gives additional advantage. So there is some parallel activities are going on. See, if somebody is attending as well as doing some other job. That's a, there's an added, added advantage, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay, madam, video or something. Madam, can we leave now? Thank you. Thank you so much. Are we done? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. All the best. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for joining. Thank you. All the best to all of you. Thank you, sir. Once again, thank you. Thank you all. Can we leave? Thank you, sir. Uh, yes, sir. See, uh, all of you can leave now and uh, you can attend the combined uh, inaugural function. The link is already sent to your email IDs and you can join us back by 11.30 for session two. Okay, thank uh, you. And the link has been posted. I will also send the link uh, through email. So please give your valuable feedback. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, for joining please. us. Okay. One request, participants, please rename yourself that you have given at the time of registration so that we can capture your attendance and help you to get your certificate at the end of this program. Thank you. I repeat, please rename yourself when you are joining with the Zoom that the name you have registered with the AICT because we are capturing the attendance automatically. I hope it is uh, understandable and thank you for your participation and your patience. Uh, thank you. Um, Dean, sir, thank you so much for your uh, support and motivation. And thank you all participants. Thank you all. The session starts at 11.30 with uh, uh, Dr. Uh, sorry, uh, digital transformation with new technologies, blockchain, AI, MI, and IoT by started. Mr. Manish Shukla. The session will start 11.30 sharp. Thank you.